Wake up, samurai. We've got a form factor to burn. What's not to love about a cyber deck? I've seen some incredible builds out there that have inspired me to make one myself, but I want something more than just a fun project. I want a cyber deck that can be used as a workstation and a gaming system. Today's hilariously giant graphics cards make it a pipe dream, until you consider the tiny and underrated RTX A2000. I featured this GPU in my last video, Densiest, Densiest? In that video, I modified the RTX A2000 with a shunt mod and overclocked it on a compact water cooling system. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to push the RTX A2000 as far as it was capable of due to the limitations imposed by the small water cooling loop. It just couldn't keep up. I could have used a larger loop, but I wanted to know if a custom full copper heatsink and shroud would do the job. This is the RTX A2000 Baby Kingpin Edition, inspired by the meanest looking GPUs from the era of EVGA. Weighing in at more than 600 grams, it has a full copper cold plate attached to a full copper skipped heat sink. I even made an Octua verge for Josh to fit in his S4T. I completed this project back in January, but instead of making a video about it then, I decided to use it in this build.
Welcome to Project Cyberdeck. The total volume is just over 4 liters, placing it between the S4 Mini and the S4 Tiny. The case is made from aluminum with stainless steel bracings and a two-tone Cerakote finish. More than 30 parts were designed and fabricated using a combination of my 3D printer, my CNC, and services provided by Send Cut Send. It has a 12.6 inch IPS screen that folds flush with the outer panel, a recessed pocket handle for travel, a horizontal stand with mounting for the Keychron K7 Ultra Slim Wireless Keyboard, a vertical stand that can be quickly attached and removed using thumb screws, and mounts for the Pulsar X2 Wireless Gaming Mouse. The case can accommodate an STX motherboard and the new HDplex 250 watt GAN power supply internally, eliminating the need for a power brick. It also has a custom sleeve power cable with a GX16 aviation connector. The rear panel has cutouts for a panel mount display port connector so that the system can be hooked up to an external monitor. The components that I chose for this build were pulled from my last video project. I'm using the ASRock X300M STX motherboard with the fastest supported CPU, the Ryzen 7 5700G. The motherboard was modified by soldering power cables from the contact points on the DC jack so that it could be plugged into the HD Plex power supply. This caused a problem since the power supply cannot detect when the motherboard calls for power. You have to use a jumper cable on the power supply. But even when a jumper cable is used, the RTX A2000 fans will continue to spin at full speed after the system is turned off. I solved both problems by using a two position toggle switch as the jumper cable and hit it inside the recessed pocket handle. It creates a unique and stealthy security feature since the system will not turn on without flipping the jumper switch before you press the power switch. As far as future upgrades are concerned, I'll just have to wait for a new STX motherboard that supports future generations of hardware. At the time of this video, NVIDIA released a similarly sized RTX A4000 SFF GPU that is more powerful than the RTX A2000. I'm in the process of acquiring one and I plan to modify it in the same way for this system. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for that update. The RTX A2000 was overclocked to reach the performance of the stock RTX 3060 and in some cases it even surpassed it. Keep in mind the performance is limited by the bandwidth of the M.2 to PCIe riser cable. The custom heatsink performed as well as I had hoped and did a great job of keeping the baby kingpin under 80 degrees Celsius at full load. The CPU was locked at 4 GHz across all 8 cores with performance boost turned off. Total maximum power consumption was under 215 watts from the wall depending on the application and in most cases averaged about 180 watts. Workstation benchmark scores surpassed my expectations, up to a 37% increase over the stock RTX A2000. Gaming benchmarks tell a similar story with up to a 49% increase. Real-time gaming performance was tested at 1440p on high settings with RTX and DLSS disabled. Control was a special use case where the GPU refused to hold the overclock settings and afterburner regardless of the temperature. I'm not sure if it had to do with the NVIDIA Studio drivers or the game itself. If you have any theories, then let me know in the comments below. This build has a great balance of portability and performance and a small form factor. It's easy to configure for travel and fits into a standard laptop bag with room to spare. I love the clean look and that it doesn't have an all-in-your-face gamer aesthetic. It fits right into a professional work environment without being obnoxious. I really enjoy the challenge that it demanded, and I'm thankful that you took the time to watch and hear its story. I look forward to your responses and answering any of the questions that you may have in the comments section. Join us on the NFC Discord server with the invite link below, and we'll see you next time. Wait, I'm trying to film this. Close it. Close it. Close the door. Seriously. Close the door.